تستنى كل سمك فيه <تصفيق> طب ويعني حضرتك حضرتك بتاكلوا سمك من غيري يعني يا دكتور هاني؟ <تصفيق> ايه ده؟ الدكتور الاشهب بيسال بتاكلوا سمك من غيري؟ نعم انا انا بقول الدكتور هاني الاول بتاكلوا سمك من غيري؟ دي واحده يا جماعه هنتفتح بس ونخلص ايوه محمد هتفتحوا امتى؟ بقول لدكتور هاني بتاكلوا سمك من غيري؟ لا معلش انا متاسف هو الدكتور يعني يعني, يعني الرئيس آه مسؤول عن الرئيس مسؤول عن اطعام عامه الشعب انا بعتذر لك يا شباب ما هو مش معقول هنعمل ويبنار كلها من مطعم سيكوت نيجي احنا الاربعه مش معقول اثنين واثنين <تصفيق> وزمايلنا الاتنديس مش معزومين على العشاء يعني <تصفيق> اه اه هنعمل ايه ما اقدرش اعزمكم انا يعني الويبنار كله هيبقى في مطعم سيكوت مش معقول ده يبقى جميل وتبقى صدقه تاريخيه يعني والله يا اساتذتنا هو, هو فكره الـ الـ الكورس ده جه في بالي ان احنا نجمع كل اساتذتنا المهاجرين بره يعني يدونا خبرتهم ويبقى يعني جمعيه جراحه العظام هي اللي سبونسرنج الموضوع كله بحيث نزيد من يعني من ارتباطهم بمصر يعني والله فكره ممتازه فكره ممتازه احنا يعني هنبدا الافتتاح هتبتدي امتى يا محمد؟ انا جاهز يا فندم انا هبدا وحضرتك والدكتور هاني بيه هتفتتح الكورس ان شاء الله معالي الوزير الدكتور عادل عدوي يبلغ حضراتكم تحياته بس هو عنده ارتباط دلوقتي يا فندم ماشي اوكي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم انا طبعا يعني ده يوم جميل ان احنا بنفتتح كورس كبير يجمع كل اخواتنا واساتذتنا المصريين المهاجرين في الخارج الاوفرسيز دي اوفرسيز انترناشونال اورثوبيديك ايشيبشن وبينار ان شاء الله باذن الله تعالى الافتتاح هيبقى مع استاذنا الكبير استاذ دكتور وجيه موسى اللي مشرفنا ومنورنا دايما في مصر يعني دكتور وجيه بيبقى قاعد في مصر اكتر من انجلترا فيعني طبعا ده شرف كبير لنا دكتور وجيه بيه معانا الافتتاح النهارده معانا دكتور هاني بيه الموافي رئيس جمعيه جراحه العظام المصريه هيفتتح الكورس مع استاذي الحبيب استاذ دكتور جمال بيه حسني الرئيس الاسبق لجمعيه جراحه العظام المصريه اتفضلوا حضراتكم شرفونا بالافتتاح يا استاذ اهلا وسهلا استاذ انا طبعا يسعدنا ويشرفنا طبعا الدعوه الكريمه استاذ دكتور محمد لشهب عميد كليه الطب منها لزملاء طبعا العلماء في الخارج جزاهم على رأسهم طبعا استاذ دكتور وجيه موسى بنرحب بيه كلنا استاذ وبنشكر دكتور محمد لشهب طبعا على المبادره الكريمه ونتمنى لكم التوفيق دي بعد كده كلمه استاذ دكتور هاني موافي رئيس الجمعيه آه، السلام عليكم طبعا انا بشكر يعني الاخوه الافاضل في دكاتره العظام في كل انحاء العالم المصريين وده شيء هم يشرفونا واحنا بنتشرفين بيهم وبعدين النهارده في بقى حاجه فيري سبيشال ليا خالص هو الاستاذ الدكتور وجيه موسى من الناس اللي هم اول حاجه هو عمره ما تاخر عن عن عننا في مصر خالص وهو دايما معانا ومتواجد معانا و وده شيء طبعا يعني كلنا بنفتخر بيه استاذ آه دكتور وجيه يعني من الناس اللي هم فعلا في فتن دانكل من الناس اللي اسم كبير وان شاء الله نتمنى ان هو واكيد هنستمتع بالمحاضره بتاعته هو هيتكلم على ذابتك فوت فشارك فوت فان شاء الله ربنا يسهل كده وان شاء الله نبقى مستمتعين بيه واكيد هنستمتع بيها تماما استاذ آه، الدكتور وجيه جاهز يا دكتور وجيه بعد اذنك؟ انا جاهز يا فندم شكرا على أوه. المقدمه الجميله دي استاذ الدكتور الاشهب استاذ الدكتور جمال حسني استاذ الدكتور هاني موافي آه، ويسعدني دايما ويشرفني ان ابقى معاكم وانتمائي ليكم اولا ودائما الله يخليك اتفضل يا دكتور وجيه حضرتك هنتكلم على الشرق مش كده يا دكتور وجيه؟ اعتقد انت تعرف حاجه او اثنين عنه برضو ايه <تصفيق> ده؟ <تصفيق> الصورة طبعا طلع يا فندم حضرتك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الف شكر المجموعة المصرية الجميلة اللي بعتز دايما باني انتمي ليها وابقى قريب منها حاجة تاريخية بسيطة جدا من 16 او 17 سنة في مصر ما كانش الفوت اند انكل از ريكوجنايزد سب سبيشاليتي But uh, thanks to uh, these uh, two uh, great uh, colleagues and uh, uh, friends, 
who set up uh, the subspeciality with the help of all the Egyptians around them, and they established the Egyptian Foot and Ankle Society. And it is going from strength to strength, was running regular courses, cadaveric workshops, That's and true. inviting faculties from all over the world. So, uh, Professor Hani Mwati, Professor Ahmed Khalif, uh, thank you very much for what you have done for the foot and ankle. And at the end of the day, you have helped the patient by improving the quality and the knowledge of all uh, junior colleagues. Uh, this is what we're going to talk about today, a uh, discussion point. Uh, like any uh, uh, topic, we'll talk about pathogenesis, uh, uh, the clinical pictures, the stages, imaging and labs, management and complications. Uh, it is a, pro a Charcot uh, neuropathy and Charcot feet is a progressive, that's very important, uh, degenerative uh, changes in the foot and ankle, but it is originally uh, uh, from denervation. So it is denervation induced. If the nerve is working normally, you will not get a Charcot. Diabetes is the most common cause that we see every day, but I have seen trauma cases with spinal cord injury that has caused peripheral neuropathy. So any condition that can cause peripheral neuropathy, either we know it or we don't, can lead to Charcot uh, deformity. Syphilis and leprosy can give the same, and uh, meningomyelocele spina pivida, uh, alcoholism, vitamin deficiencies, amyloid, uh, post renal transplantation and excessive use and prolonged use of uh, steroid and heavy metal poisoning. Uh, I see patient here and they have idiopathic uh, peripheral neuropathy and with associated Charcot uh, disease. In uh, uh, diagnosed uh, cases, is that not clear here? Shall I minimize that? Yeah. Uh, the ratio in patients with diabetes is 7 to uh, 0.5, but it can go up to 13 or 15 percent of all diabetic patients. Uh, 29 percent neuropathic patients are affected. There are differences between type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes, but the literature says the same uh, percentage. The osteopenia seems to be uh, more relevant in type 1 diabetes. And osteopenia is a, an integral part of developing Charcot uh, deformities. When we get a patient with diabetes, we always tell them that you have about 10% chance of having it bilaterally. Now, there are two types of diabetes, not type 1 and type 2, but there's complicated diabetes and uncomplicated diabetes. The complicated diabetes is what we really get worried about when we do foot and ankle surgery. Because of that neuropathy, it increases risks of uh, uh, surgical infection and poor long-term glycemic control is also another important factor in determining and predicting complications. This is a little uh, graph there and uh, in foot and ankle surgery, the chance of having complication is less than 2% in a non-diabetic or non-neuropathic feet. If you have a non-diabetic neuropathy, then the chances is about 7%. Uncomplicated diabetes is about 3%, but most importantly, in the poorly controlled diabetes or complicated diabetes, the ratio is exceeding 10%. And this is very important to tell the patient or even to consider su surgery or otherwise. It is commonly missed. So if the doctors are not really thinking of it all the time and have uh, a high suspicious uh, index, they can miss it in up to 25%. Uh, the short cut feet can present re resembling uh, some other uh, condition, uh, such as osteomyelitis or cellulitis. So what happened? How do they present? The pain and the reduction in ambulation causes local inflammatory process to subside. This is in a normal foot. So someone has pain. Uh, and then he reduces mobility, then the inflammatory markers is, is reduced, 
and it settles. But in neuropathic patient, the insensitive foot does not exhibit pain as appropriate. Therefore, the patient continue to mobilize and avoid immobilization. And then you flare up and you get infant matricycles. The lack of pain and proprioception sensation leads to the medial arch collapse and unlocking the mid-tarsal joint, which is locked with the heel strike, but here it unlocked with the heel rise. The mid-tarsal breaks and you get the rocker bottom. So the pathophysiology of the charcot is inflammation, neuropeptides, microvascular structures, and bone turnover with increased osteoclasts, hyperglycemia, and there is genetic variations. This is how they present bony destructions and fragmentation, then subsequently bone remodeling, joint destruction continue, and subluxation and deformity. The average disease can last up to 12 years. As I said, the predisposing and risk factor is poor blood sugar control. Now, how can we classify it? Brodesky classified Charcot according to the anatomy. So it's an anatomical classification according to the area of the foot that is affected. The commonest is the tarsal metatarsal, i.e. naviculo uh, 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 Naviculo metatarsal joint. That is top type one and seventy percent. Type two in the mid tarsal and subtalar joint. This is talonavicular, calcaneocuboid, and the subtalar joint, or what we call the triple joints, and this is twenty percent. Type three A and B. This is the ankle joint, and B is the avulsion of the tendon Achilles. Type 4, when it affects multiple region, and type four, 5, when the forefoot and interdigital, interphalangeal uh, uh, joints are affected. And this is a little drawing of type 1, 2, 3, and 4. Type 1, this is a metatarsal, and this is a cuneiform, so cuneiform metatarsal involvement. Type 2, talonavicular, calcineocuboid, and subtalar. Type 3A, ankle joint. Type 3B is a function of the uh, uh, tendon Achilles. Ickenholtz describes and classify them according to the radiographic staging. So zero is negative radiograph. So the patient has symptoms, but no changes in the x-rays. Two, it is developmental or acute stage. This is when you get the fragmentation. Three is the coalescence or the healing stage. Three is a consolidation. I call them acute healing and healed. So in Ickenholtz, stage zero, the foot is swollen, it is red, it is warm. But Bone scan could be positive. Two, number one, hyperemia, diffuse swelling, subluxation, debris formation, and fragmentation. This is when it got really nasty. Stage two, you start to have some coalitions and you have sclerosis and the joint become less mobile or subacute phase. The healed phase. So, as I said, acute, subacute, and chronic. Stage three, this is what we see once you have treated the patient, say, by total contact cast. Another classification, the Rogen and Bilivuka, and that considers the prediction of complication. So it is very simple and clear. 
and most importantly, it can predict the complication. It is two axes, X and Y, combining the features of clinical examination, radiology, and anatomy. And here it is. So if you look one, two, and three, there is forefoot, midfoot, and hind foot and ankle. And it is A, B, C, D. Acute charcoal symptom, but no deformity. B is charcoal with deformity. C, charcoal with deformity and ulceration. And D, all of the above plus osteomyelitis. And that's the worst prediction. You can end up with a 3D, which likely that may require amputation. So how they present? They present a red, hot, swollen foot. Typically painless or sometimes mildly painful. It can mimic, as I said, cellulitis, gout, or osteomyelitis, or even DVT. Plain firms may have been normal. The examination reveals joint hypermobility, crepitus, and cutaneous ulceration. What we do here in Southampton is to take the skin temperature, and this is a very good parameter. So we compare the temperature in both feet in six specific points, and we write it on a chart. And if the temperature is more than two degrees, it is diagnostic. The disease progresses, and then you have your collapse arches. As we can see here, acute presentation, uh, rocket bottom deformity. Collapse of arches. I've seen cases when patient did not attend during the acute or healing phase and came later with this deformity, and these were mistaken or the diagnosis was made wrongly as a stage three or four tibialis posterior dysfunction. The x-rays obviously is very clear that it wasn't that diagnosis. So why do we need images? A is diagnostic to see the status of the joint and to see whether the fragmentation and dislocation has occurred. Also the x-rays will show soft tissue edema and it will show heterotopic ossification. You can measure the angles of the feet that we all know for plano vulgus feet and measure all the uh, arches and coverage and midfoot to forefoot relationship. But the findings of the alignment demonstrate the presence of a foot deformity at the time of initial clinical presentation. Now, if we have evidence of progression, that means that you are likely to have some intervention. CT scan, I will consider it if I'm thinking, thinking of uh, reconstruction surgery. MRI is important in the hands of those who can very specifically report them. You can get confused between osteomyelitis and bone marrow edema, and this is very confusing. You have to have a good musculoskeletal radiologist. Ultrasound could be very useful as well to determine whether there is collection that may require aspiration or uh, drainage. Uh, bone scan, particularly labeled uh, uh, white blood uh, cells, can differentiate charcoal from uh, infection. As I said, X-rays are very important as to assess the evidence of worsening. So, how would we treat that? The aim is to have stability of a plantigrade foot and keep the foot for, uh, free of ulceration. We do everything we can to avoid ulceration. Now, how to select which treatment? It is phase dependent. It depends on the stage of the disease, also on the location and severity, uh, plus or minus ulceration. Non-operative treatment, we treat that as the uh, baseline for all newcomers, and that will be total contact casting, which is reviewed weekly and exchanged. With that, we keep and monitor the skin temperature on the feet. And as I said, temperature above two will need total contact cast. Temperature between uh, less than two will require a uh, uh, crew, uh, or the charcoal constrained orthotic walker, or any other diabetic friendly uh, walkers. 
Bisphosphonate has a role to play and neuropathic pain medication. Total contact cast. It's an art to do this uh, uh, cast and to have the time and the patient to repeat it weekly or two weekly to make sure there is no ulceration and to take the temperature. It redistributes the weight bearing all over the uh, foot rather than heel strike or four foot strike. It is an art and it is not simple to perform and you have to have the team who are able to apply it. After the acute phase has settled, long-term permanent pressing is often needed. So I always tell the patient, you likely to have some sort of insole or orthotics or a boot or some custom modification to the footwear for the long term. Can you use other things? Yes, we can. You can use patella tendon bearing uh, brace and that will take the weight into the patella and reduce the weight bearing on the foot. We only consider surgery if all conservative measures failed because of the significantly high risk of complication that may lead to amputation. Again, what surgical procedure would you consider? It, it is patient dependent, i.e. depends on the stage and the severity, but there is a selection of procedure that you may consider, like osteotomies to correct deformity, arthrodesis of unstable, uh, 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 degenerate uh, joint, fragmented joint, uh, closing with the osteotomy of the metatarsal, external fixation. At early stages, you have four foot overloading and fixed plantar deformity of the foot. And for those, we tend to do percutaneous tendo Achilles lengthening. The goal is to restore stability, and I repeat that time and time again, because if you have an unstable foot, you're likely to have uh, uh, ulceration. You need to prevent the deformity and try to prevent ulcers. Other things that you may consider, in addition to osteotomy, tend to Achilles lengthening and exostectomy, uh, debriding the ulcer, of course, and taking deep tissue biopsies for microbiology and histology. How would you fix your arthrodesis depends on the joint you're fixing and the skills you have and your uh, ability to fix internally or externally. Amputation is the last option, of course. Saying internal external fixation, it is quite common that we use combination of internal and external fixation to stabilize hind feet in diabetics. Treating diabetic feet is time consuming and you have to be aware of that and you have to give the patient the time and the uh, skill mix in the clinic uh, 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 to deal with that. Patient has to be educated preoperatively. They take long time, frequent visits. You have to have a setup with physiotherapist, podiatrist, plaster technician, etc., etc. When we do exostectomy, Always avoid going through the ulcers. You go through the ulcers if you're taking biopsies or deep tissue biopsies. But if you're doing excision uh, of a lump, exostectomy, try to get away from the ulcer and straight to the bone. Obviously, when you read signal to bone, uh, you make sure that it's not affecting the stability and you reattach the tissue that is attached to it. What happens with fractures of diabetes? This is a completely different game. We tend to surgically treat them because non-operative treatment high uh, 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 morbidities. Traditionally, we've been taught that strong fixation and prolonged period of time. So we always been taught that twice the strength, twice the length of time. However, this hasn't got a, a very uh, strong scientific uh, evidence. You have to control the uh, uh, the diabetes and get HbA1c or glycemic control. Uh, we need longer weight of protected wear. So, 
we mentioned how to fix uh, the joint that you want to stabilize. But you have to be extremely careful when you remove the cartilage and debris. Always send the specimen for microbiology, even if there was no ulcers. Deprive the articular surface to subchondral bone. Soft tissue is very, very important to meticulously be handled. Synovial ought to be completely removed. You can use low profile plates, one or two. You have a combination, you have a whole menu of fixation of bones that you can think of and you can have any or all or a combination of them. One plate will not be enough to fuse an ankle in diabetic, so it's double plating. Stymen pin, uh, we don't use here in the UK, but this is slide from colleague in Egypt. Failed uh, ankle uh, fixation or patient developed uh, charcut uh, following uh, an ankle uh, fixation, completely out of line. And colleague uh, put some cannulated uh, screws there, which is a valid option. You can put them retrograde or you can put them anti-grade. Again, uh, depends on what do you have uh, in your hand in your uh, hospital. Can you read it screws again? Retrograde. The problem with those is if you if they don't heal, uh, they are likely to break. And if they break, they are not easy to take out. Mm -hmm. This was a lucky one that wasn't broken but there are others uh, that they break. Now, these are nightmares, and uh, I think I learn a lot when I come to Egypt from the experience of colleague, particularly in Mansoura. Mansoura has lots of uh, 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 publications about diabetic feet, and Professor Hani Mwafi has published the uh, Mansoura classification uh, which is about uh, deformity, stability, and mechanical ulcers. Depends where it is. A case like that is a nightmare. And really, uh, you need to go to Australia or Mansoura or Banha uh, to deal with it. Uh, this is what colleagues do. They are very brave uh, uh, to uh, tackle this patient, knowingly that the chance of amputation is pretty high. And it's very brief with the patient as well, but there's no other uh, alternative. And here we are, managed to reconstruct a hind foot uh, from almost nothing. That was Professor Ahmed Khalif. And here is a follow-up. Uh, a plantigrade uh, foot that can the patient can walk on. Arthrodesis was nail, and uh, I learned uh, the arthrodesis nail from Professor Hani Mwafi, and he uh, uses a lizard or other uh, frame uh, fixation jointly with the intramedullary uh, nails. Uh, the entry is simple and clear, and everything is under imaging intensifier. Uh, it is all Mickey Mouse stuff once you are in the bone because it's all one, two, three, four steps and it is guided by that. And this is what you can do. Hind foot nail, you can compress in any direction that you would like. You could have screws, variable screws to compress a subtalar joint uh, or ankle joint. I treat diabetic uh, fracture or fragility fracture commonly with hind foot nail uh, to minimize the damage to the soft tissue. And you just need to have a stab wound on the plantar aspect, which generally speaking is not too swollen. But when you have comminution like that, uh, the, the question would be, do you need to open the joint and to denude the articular surface or do you do a blind uh, fusion? And this is the steps and the nail in place. Uh, this doesn't co come uh, uh, with risk-free or complication-free. It has complications, of course, and we'll talk about it later. 
Uh, small step wounds when you do the nail. So if the ankle is too swollen, as in fra acute fractures, or the patient has had previous surgeries, uh, this is pretty soft tissue uh, friendly. Another case was deformity. CT scan is a must to see the bone stock, to see how much you're going to excise. Uh, you tend to excise bone so you don't stretch the soft tissue. So you make the bone stock uh, suitable for the soft tissue sleeve. You don't stretch the soft tissue to maintain the bone. You excise the bone, you sacrifice the bone. If the patient is going to lose a leg, they're going to lose it because of soft tissue complications. And combination of a intramedullary hind foot nail and a plate. Excellent fixation. I have no experience in cream fixation, but we have colleagues in Southampton who a limb reconstruction uh, specialist who uses frame and they can help us. And in Egypt, I'm very impressed when I go to any conference and see the uh, incredible work that is done by uh, uh, limb reconstruction colleagues uh, who uses the frame. Uh, ring, another ring. So Achilles tendon, this is a case where Achilles tendon was resected an exostectomy and osteotomy with fixation and internal external. So exostectomy, the approach is from the lateral side, but the ulcer was plantar words. Achilles tendon was lengthened. Satisfactorily corrected. When you have a case like that, you will have to consider uh, a mid tarsal uh, fusion, and there are so many different ways that you could consider. The bolt, uh, you go through the head of the first metatarsal and all the way back to the uh, talus and uh, fusing all the joint in the way. Fusing the tarsal metatarsals uh, of the other lesser toes. You could combine the first tray surgery with uh, the bolt. You could put a plate as well. Pretty satisfying procedure, but quite a uh, uh, bloody uh, procedure. Time consuming uh, and you have to be quite uh, ruthless in excising bones to reduce it to the volume and the size of the soft tissue. Can use plates to stabilize the first array, as in this case, because the lesser toes have not been affected or damaged. So here it is, you excise the uh, excess uh, bone or lumbectomy or excessectomy, and uh, you put your plate on the medial side, either straight medial or dorsimedial. I tend to do the medial. Again, another one. Now, this is what colleagues in Egypt are very clever in doing. It's a combination of a uh, internal and external fixation. And uh, I have seen incredible results. Uh, a patient who, uh, anywhere else, they would have had an amputation. They have managed to treat their ulcers and uh, uh, straighten uh, uh, their foot and give them a plantigrade stable uh, foot to walk on. As I said, it doesn't come without complication. Uh, this uh, surgery that we uh, consider, uh, that seems to be okay initially, but proximally there was a stress rider and uh, a fracture uh, proximal. Infection uh, following uh, retrograde uh, cannulated screws, uh, very common. Fractures of the uh, metal work. Infection again. Now, when you have a case like that, what would you do? Very, very difficult, I think. Uh, I think at some point, 
uh, you have to tell the patient that are going undergoing surgery that there is a risk of uh, complication that may lead to an amputation. It's something that you don't wish to do, but there are different types of amputation that you may consider. Mid-tarsal amputation is pretty satisfactory. Patients uh, have uh, a little filling in their shoes and they can get back to almost near activities. Uh, but other amputation obviously will be considered. Uh, the below knee amputation is very bad because this patient, 70%, will never walk again and they will be a wheelchair bound. So, Charcot is potentially devastating sequelae of diabetes. Careful initial management and long-term follow-up. You have to have the options of conservative and surgical treatment and have all options open. In, you have to teach the junior doctor, particularly those of the emergency department, particularly those general practitioners, to have a high index of suspicion when they have red or swollen uh, feet. There are the risks that you have to be aware of and discuss with your patient. Rigid fixation is the ultimate aim of any unstable deformed charcoal foot. Thank you. Thank you so much, our dear professor, استاذنا العزيز استاذ دكتور وجيه بي موسى على يعني المحاضره الجميله ونقل خبره حضرتك لينا كلنا مش ل... مش لكل الزملاء الاتنديز ولي انا شخصيا طبعا متشكرين جدا يا استاذنا. ثانك يو ثانك يو فيري ماتش حبيبي الف شكر. شكرا شكرا جزيلا استاذنا الغالي. <تصفيق> طبعا الزملاء الاعزاء الحاضرين اي حد هاف اني كويستشن بليز رايت ات ان ذا كويستشن اند انسر بوكس. هو يعني بعد اذن حضرتك لو تسمح لنا ببعض الدسكشن يا دكتور وجيه بيه اتفضل يا فندم اتفضل هو اول حاجه سعادتك اتكلمت على الاكيوت شاركوت والديفرنشيشن من الانفكشن والاوستيومايلايتس هل بدا أيوة. بالسيرولوجي ولا بدخل دايركتلي على البون سكان ولا في حاجات اذر ماركرز حضرتك بتبريفير ان احنا نكونسيدر في الديفرنشيشن اي ثينك لاب از از نمبر 1 تمبرشر اوف بوث فيت ultrasound before the bone scan or anything else. Uh, the history of the patient will be very, very important. If the patient is diabetic and the diabetes is poorly controlled, so the likelihood is you're heading towards a shark. Uh, if the white can and uh, CRP are high, uh, then ultrasound will show whether mm -hmm. there is a uh, collection or not. MRI scan, as I said, needs a careful Uh, 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 reporting by musculoskeletal radiologists because it's quite confusing uh, when you have excessive bone marrow edema or osteomyelitis. But I will start with good history taking, good assessment, and start with a simple lab, ESR, CRP, uh, white blood count. And then I will move to a cheaper and easy accessible investigation like ultrasound and followed by MRI. Uh, bone scan is quite expensive, and in the national health, it, it, there's a bit of waiting for that. I will not rush to do it. Yes, yes sir. The second question for me, sir. حرك من خبرة حركة طويلة دكتور وجيه بي هل معليك بتفضل the internal fixation ولا the external fixation؟ طبعا كويس إن دكتور جمال مش معانا لأن طبعا يعني the external fixation هو بيقلاوي بزات الإلزارف إن أنا أعمل continuous compression وده طبعا بيساعد في the healing لو أنا حبيت أعمل arthrodesis just fixation يعني. فهل خبرة سعادتك بتفضل internal ولا external ولا combined internal and external؟ That's a very good question, Professor Ashab. It depends which part of the foot we're dealing with. If you're talking about hind foot, ankle, subtalar area, then uh, I could, I will be more than happy to consider a combination of intramedullary nail and the frame or a yes. frame on itself. But when you come to midfoot, which is a common 70%, will come as a, a midfoot. I'm not sure that external fixation has an important role to play that. I'm sure some colleague may consider, but with those, I will wait until the uh, healed phase, until it's all coalesced, until the temperature of both feet is almost normal, until the glycemic control is achieved, and then I will go for internal fixation. Sir, if you do intramedullary nail, حضرتك بتفضل تعملوا بيركتين يا سي أستاذنا ولا حضرتك بتحب تفتح وتعمل ديبرايدمنت وبعد كده تعمل النيلين؟ Right, uh, two indications for hind foot nail. If I have a diabetic unstable ankle fracture, I, I put the nail without opening the joint uh, because of the soft tissue swelling and it is 
done on the day of admission or next day. But if I'm doing intramedullary nail to correct deformity or to achieve stable hind foot in an unstable hind foot, then I will open the joint and uh, remove the articular surface. أستاذنا إحنا يعني عندنا معلش lots of questions من our dear colleagues فهل تسمح لنا بأن إحنا نأخذ بعض الأسئلة يا فندم؟ تفضل يا فندم هو أول أول سؤال من أخونا الحبيب الدكتور جمال قاسم اللي هو طبعا متابع جيد جدا لكل محاضرات حضرتك وكل الزملاء which stage of charcot is prospective is operation for a valsed Achilles can get success instead of presence of the cause or incontinent with treatment Say it again, Professor Ashab. Uh, which stage of Charcot is prospect? It goes it any is uh, operative is operation for a valsed Achilles can get success instead of the presence of the cause or incompetent with treat in in concomitant with treat. Okay, I will not touch acute Charcot surgically. Although I have a patient in hospital now, she is in acute charcoal and she has a fractured ankle. That's another matter. The surgical insult can exaggerate the charcoal reaction. So I will try to reserve surgery as an elective procedure when the patient is being optimized, when the glycemia is controlled, and when the foot temperature is uh, near normal. Avoid a, acute charcoal surgical insult that is going to make your life very, very difficult. So these are the principles that we follow. Avulsion of tendo Achilles is very difficult because the patient usually are, uh, are elderly. The skin in this area could be very, very tricky. And I will do percutaneous screw fixation rather than anything else, unless you have a third of the calcaneum is attached to the uh, 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 tendo Achilles. In this case, I may open it up and do a plate in the back. But if you cannot do it acutely, you shouldn't worry because you can always go and do a, once the patient is optimized, once the patient stopped smoking, once the patient uh, 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 diabetes is controlled, you can do a soft tissue reconstruction of the tendo Achilles. The whole idea of surgery on diabetic is to reduce the risks or minimize the risk as much as you can. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, another question, Min Khuna Dr. Abdullah. What about the management of bilateral charcot feet? Oh, we said about 10% of patients will have bilateral, and I have in my clinic about three or four of those who are bilateral. Very, very, very difficult. Uh, you have to immobilize the, the foot. Uh, you have to put them in a total contact cast or crew boot. You have to immobilize as part of your uh, 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 management. This patient will have to be on a wheelchair. Uh, if you started to walk, the shark is not going to settle. I give them other uh, leaflet about how to look after themselves. They have to increase the uh, water intake. Uh, so this patient, I always advise them to drink at least two and a half to three liters of water per day. They have to cut down on caffeine. So those who drink lots of tea, for instance, or coffee, they have to cut on that as well. They have to offload as much as you can. There is a, uh, a, a, a relationship between how much you offload and how quickly your charcoal will settle. So you, if you have bilateral, you have to put both in, in, in boots or a, a, a total contact cast, depends on uh, how you feel or how they feel. The problem that I find when I have bilateral is how would you compare the temperature? Because you compare the charcoal foot to the normal foot. But if it is bilateral, it is tricky, but you know what is the skin temperature in a foot anyway, which will be between uh, uh, 32 to 34. So you could guess, but bilateral are difficult to manage and the patient will be very unhappy. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, another question, من أخونا الحبيب دكتور سعد الجبالة. Uh, if there is some part of the talus remaining, sir, do you prefer to leave it for fusion or remove and diffuse the tibia to the calcaneus? 
الدكتور سعد جبالة من ضمان هور هذا اه اه ده دكتور سعد من الناس المتابعين اللي يعني في كل شيء يعني في اي حاجه في العلم هتلاقيه موجود يا فندم And it is not between the tibia and the calcaneum. So basically, the tibia is kissing the calcaneum. I will fuse the tibia to the calcaneum and leave the talus there. Or consider something like a Blair fusion. But the rules are, I don't throw bone away. Uh, if I can keep it, I will keep it. Yes, sir. Another question, sir. Min, I'm not sure, Dr. Wagib, we have a lot of questions. Please, please, please. Please, please. Please, please. Please, From Dr. Mahmoud Gamal. Uh, when I must do total contact cast versus cam walker? Ah, we have a protocol that we're going to do. We have a National Institute of Clinical Excellence. They always guide us about things like that. So in Southampton, the rules are if the food temperature, so I, I can post that at some point to you, the, uh, the, 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 uh, صورة من الفورم اللي احنا بنسجل فيها التمبرتشر في 6 بوينت في الفوت بناخد التمبرتشر عليهم سو وي ميجر ذا سكين تمبرتشر ان 6 سبيسيفيك بوينت ان ذا فوت اوكي اند وي ميجر ذا ديزيزد فوت اند وي ميجر ذا هيلثي فوت اف ذا تمبرتشر ديفرنس از مور ذان 2 ديجريز ان 2 اور مور ذان In two or more than two points, then it's a total contact cast. So the ions is not in six points. We have three points from them. The difference is more than two degrees. This is a total contact cast. Of course, the ions will give you four or five temperature and things more than that. Also, in the acute phase. But if there are two points in the foot, the, the temperature is two degrees higher than the equivalent on the other side, then that will be a total contact cast. Below that is a boot, and less than one degree, they can get back to their own uh, footwear, modified footwear. Thank you so much, sir. معانا سؤال من اخونا الدكتور فادي من لبنان وهو بيرحب بحضرتك بيقول لحضرتك كل الزملاء الاعزاء في لبنان بيرحبوا بحضرتك اهلا بيك واحنا بنرحب بكل الزملاء من لبنان الحبيبه وكل الدول العربيه الشقيقه سؤال الدكتور فادي ماي كويستشن از وين يو ليت يور بيشنت بي موبيلايزد اند فولي ويت بير افتر انكل ارثروديسيس وات اباوت يور اكسبيرينس سير ان بوست اوبريتيف انتي بايوتكس Uh, again, uh, patients are increased risk of infection, as we said, uh, more than 10% of patients will have complication if they have complicated diabetes. Uh, as I said, there are simple principles that we follow. All will send the specimen for culture and sensitivity, even if you think it is not infected. That's number one. Sometimes you get skin necrosis, avascular necrosis, debris, and you may have some low-grade infection that you are not aware of. If the patient had history of an ulcer in that foot and the ulcer has healed, you always send specimen. So anything you can take out intraoperatively, send it for microbiology. That is rule number one. Number two, how long would it take to uh, before you allow the patient to fully weight bear? We tend to ask him to weight bear early, especially those who are having a frame and, uh, uh, and the nail or a nail only. They weight bear probably at six weeks. But historically or traditionally, uh, we've been told that this patient will take twice the length of time to heal. Uh, the bone will heal. And therefore, probably fully weight bearing after three months. Although there, there is no strong scientific evidence of that length of time, but that is traditionally what we've been taught and that's what we're following. Or unless you have good evidence on imaging, uh, radiographs or a CT scan, that you have more than 50% of the uh, joint as fused, then you can allow them to fully weight bear. Thank you, sir. Another question من الأخت العزيزة دكتورة نجوى المقراحي من ليبيا وتحياتنا لكل الإخوة الأشقاء من ليبيا الشقيقة. 
Uh, what about reconstruction of charcoal joint and ankle by bone graft and also arthrodesis by bone grafting, sir? Uh, what do you mean bone grafting? Uh, Isla Crush bone graft or I, I, I think, bone uh, bank or, yeah, bone, yeah. or bone bank? Uh, no, 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 no. Isla Crush yeah. bone graft. I think so. Uh, you you can you can fill any little voids obviously uh, you are limited on how much you can take uh, people can talk about using bone bank and femoral heads but this is completely uh, not in this case you have it for avascular necrosis not for diabetes you try to minimize uh, 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 any uh, implant or tissue or material that hasn't got blood supply yes you can use uh, bone graft to fill some voids yes sir Another question, sir, from uh, Dr. Khaled Swilam. Uh, what about using internal fixation as plating in uh, unsensitive food? Uh, well, what are the options that you have? Uh, if you have a deformity or instability that is going to give this asensate foot, obviously, give him an ulcer, and that will be a, a, a predisposition for amputation, then you need to give him a rigid, a stable, corrected foot to walk on. So uh, asensate foot has a high risk of complication, but you don't have other options to avoid and prevent the predicted ulceration, except correcting the deformity, either by soft tissue lengthening tendo Achilles or exostectomy to take the prominent bone out of the way. But if you aim to achieve stability and correction of deformity, you have to go for it on the understanding that there is increased risk of amputation. And if you don't do that, then the amputation will become ultimately uh, necessary as a result of ulcers. Yes, sir. Ma'ana, Dr. Harak, Dr. Haysam Abdirahim, the Akhil Aziz, Bibat Harak Shokru, Tahayatu, and Almania, Mukazarik Al Adid, and the Zumal Al Afadi, the Fandem, Bibat Al Harak Shokru, and Tahayatu, and Gamian. Akhil Suali Fandem, and Dr. Kamar Rashid, for how long can we put the patient in total contact casting Syria? Ah, this is the, this is what we call the $64,000 uh, $64, question. I had patient who came uh, with acute charcoal. Uh, we bought them in total contact cast and they were out of the cast in six weeks. But this is a patient dependent. So the patient was cooperative. The patient was committed. The patient got the diabetes sorted out. The six weeks... Uh, the patient were strictly none with bearing, came initially every week for two weeks and then subsequently every two weeks after that. I have patient who was in total contact cast for, listen to this one, three years. Three years in total contact cast. Obviously, uh, 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 frequently seen, exchanged. But this patient has all sorts of complications, diabetes-related complication from the kidney, from uh, inability to control the uh, glycemia, and he uh, was not compliant. He was weight-bearing. Uh, he was living by himself, and he said he cannot use crutches, etc., etc., etc. So when I see the patient, I say, we cannot predict uh, how long you're going to be in the total contact cast, but the temperature... Uh, the skin temperature of your foot will predict, uh, will give us a trajectory of how quickly you're going to get out of the cast. Thank you so much, sir. And in the end of the day, of course, we don't want to thank you for your presence. Thank you so much, Dr. Wajih, for this beautiful presentation. تحت امرك يا فندم وانا سعيد ان انتم دعتوني وان شاء الله نشوفكم وشكرا لكل الزملاء اللي اتندد الميتنج دي. حضرتك دكتور وجيه اياديكم البيضاء يعني على كل جراح العظام في مصر وفي الوطن العربي كله. ربنا يخليك يعني طبعا يعني سعداء بان الافتتاح يكون بتشريف حضرتك واحنا دايما بنقول حضرتك عميد يا عميد جراحي العظام في انجلترا. وفي اوروبا كلها يا فندم ربنا يخليك يا فندم وانت آه عملت حاجات ما حدش فينا ولا قبلنا ولا بعدنا فكر فيها الالاف استفادوا من مجهودك يا دكتور محمد وربنا يخليك بزاد حدا سنه حسناتك ان شاء الله كله بتوفيق الله سبحانه وتعالى ثم بمجهودات اساتذتنا الافاضل اللي حضرتك على راسهم يا دكتور وجيه بيه الله يخليك يا فندم الله يخليك يا فندم انا طبعا بشكر حضرتك شكر جزيل وبشكر الزملاء الحضور ان شاء الله بامر اللي احنا مستمرين مع حضراتكم في الاوفرسيز كورس 
وباذن الله تعالى هتكون المحاضره الجايه الجمعه الجايه مع اخونا العزيز الدكتور وليد قشطه رئيس قسم العظام في جامعه ماكماستر في كندا وان شاء الله نسعد برؤيه حضراتكم جميعا وشكر جزيل لاستاذي الحبيب استاذ دكتور وجيه بي موسى شاكرين او سعادتك يا فندم ربنا يجعله ميزان حسنات حضرتك تصبحوا على خير يا فندم تشكرين يا استاذ تصبحوا على الف خير شكرا يا استاذنا مع الف سلام مع السلامه